Now, you've understood that Africa is open for business, and there's a lot of headroom ahead of us. But I think it's important for us to take a step back and understand what is happening in current context in other markets that are emerging that are really showing us lighthouse examples of what is translating today in those markets so we can learn and steal with pride. And with that, I am excited to introduce to you, virtually, because we're doing a hybrid event, to a speaker who would have been here physically, unfortunately could not work out to be here with us, a personal friend, Alpa Gut, who is the head of, a director of retail in Turkey, one of our cluster peer markets, who's going to talk to us about what he's seeing in terms of retail uh, evolution in Turkey. And then following that, you will hear from uh, also a personal friend, Tarek, who's a head of retail in MENA, which is Middle East and Northern Africa. I'm excited for what they're going to share. I'll hand over to the tech team to see the, uh, to render them on, uh, on our screens. Enjoy. Thank you. So now I really do feel bad, and you know, it made me even feel worse that you can only see, you know, the top of my shoulders on my head. I was looking forward to being there, but it didn't work out. So hopefully next time. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll try to take you over what we've been doing in Turkey in the realm of retail with different types of clients. So basically our pure play clients, and when I say pure play, these are clients who've been born into the internet, they're natives, and they don't have any physical stores. But as important as them, we also have lots of omni-channel players who were traditional retailers and are working their way into the digital realm. With, and hope that this was gonna be a source of inspiration uh, for all of you. So I think the first question is, you know, why Turkey, right? And if we do look at, you know, how Turkey compares to uh, South Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa versus the world, I do see a lot of similarities. Given this, I do believe that, you know, what we're doing in Turkey can be a source of inspiration uh, for you guys, but also I'm, keen to understand and learn more from you on how we can really help our clients uh, move forward in Turkey. As you can all imagine, my 2021 was a transformational year. As a result of the pandemic, which had a lot of adverse effects, we did see a positive sign for our e-commerce players. And with, with lockdown, stores being closed, people flocked to the internet, they flocked online. The big question for us was, can we make the stick? And I'm happy to say that, yes, we have. But what does that mean? So we kind of look at this from four different angles, right? The, the first one being, you know, what, how did this turn out for uh, the consumer? So the consumers in Turkey were already digitized in the sense that they had credit cards. Almost all of them had credit cards, which made it very easy for them to shop online once they needed to. Digital banking in Turkey has been a pioneer for a long term, and this not only impacted credit cards, but other offers like you know, pay, buy now, pay later, installments, et cetera, were already there. The other thing that happened is, with the close downs, we also found that consumers really love to shop in store. Right? And once these lockdowns eased in the second half of 2021, people rushed back to the stores. And the question was, so what does this mean for e-commerce? And I'm happy to say that we're seeing both of these tribes simultaneously. That's the consumer angle. Now for retailers, our retailers were very quick to embrace this change. To the extent that when you look at all advertising dollars spent in Turkey over the past year, two thirds go to digital channels. And, and this is all advertising. So everything from TV to outdoor to search, two thirds are spent online. This just goes to show how much our retailers have embraced uh, digital. But the second big thing that our retailers did was they were very quick to act, try, learn, test. And we've, you might've heard that we actually pioneered what, what's now called quick commerce, having one of the largest players in Turkey. Marketplaces, which are basically our pure player players, right, were also very quick. So they saw the opportunity and they expanded their business. Some of these vertical players who were only active in one market started going into new categories and they started branching out. 
The larger ones moved over to what we're calling a super app vision, meaning that it's all about eyeballs and how much I can retain your time on my app. Right? And why do I say app? Because almost 70% you know, of all transactions in e-commerce happen through an app in Turkey. Right? So they started adding offerings from everything from ordering your normal kind of e-commerce products to groceries, to having games, to, or, to ordering water, et cetera. And last but not least, merchants. So this is the, the, the people who actually drive those marketplaces. These are our small and medium enterprises in Turkey that make up the bulk of our economy. We're very quick to partner with these marketplaces, some of them to actually launch their own e-commerce sites to make sure that they can capitalize on the changing e-commerce space. Now, and as a result, what I'm really proud of is the left side of the screen, where you can see that for our retailers, for our omni-channel players, they today make about one-fifth or 20% of their revenue from e-commerce. This was 10% a year ago, and much, much less a couple of years back. So this just shows that when the consumer is ready, once the, our retailers and our partners are there and they're happy to test and stuff out, the consumer reaction has been very positive. And that's what gives us even more hope for the future where we want to see this 20% move to around 50% uh, in the coming years. But what does this really mean you know, for you? So this is a Turkey story, that's all great, but you know, what does this mean for you uh, because I'm assuming that, you know, Turkey is a place that you might want to come for a holiday, but you're not going to be a retailer in Turkey anytime soon. I think the three, the lessons are threefold. So one of them is how do you diversify your channels? And I'll get into the details because this is different for omni channels and pure players. The second question is, or the second learning is, how do you adapt the testing and learning mindset? We know that not everything works. And to be very frank, like in Turkey, even as Google, we tried to kind of stimulate demand in our home and garden category. That didn't work. We had advertising, it didn't work. But we also did a lot of stuff that worked. And the ones that did work outweighed the things that didn't. But it's this testing and learning mindset, being willing to take risks, that really made a difference. And the third one was automation. And automation is a fancy word. and our retailers don't really care about the word automation. What they do care and why they were very quick in adapting this is they saw the value or the efficiency that automation brings. So now they can get their people to work on stuff that really matters, stuff that's really gonna help them drive their business, stuff that's really gonna help them grow instead of trying to optimize a campaign where we know that machine learning can do it much more effectively. And to get into the details, so, what does channel diversification look like? So for us, at least, channel diversification for pure players meant that it's all about apps. So how do you get your apps into more phones? How do you make sure that minutes of usage on those apps are going up? How do you make sure that people drive, or how do you drive organic traffic or direct traffic to your app so that it becomes a habit? And we have five different players today in Turkey with more than 5 million uh, monthly active users. So this means that, you know, consumers or customers are willing to switch between apps. You look at them, use them, and we as Google are supporting them. It was an installation game in the beginning. Now it's more of an engagement game. The, the second part is around category management. So if you're a retailer, right, if you're strong in a couple of categories, right, the question that we ask you is, A, is, are these categories growing? And if so, how can we help you grow? But if these categories are shrinking, right, then how do we help you optimize? So how do we make sure that you get the most profit out of these categories? Which categories should you be expanding into? Which ones should you be scaling back? What does your product be look like? So it's all about how do I grow my category? So apps is a channel in terms of how do I get customers? Categories is another one. And the last one is around deep linking. So deep linking is basically a product where if you see anything on the web, if you search for something, if you see a YouTube video, for instance, the minute you click on that link, does it take you directly 
to your app or if you don't have an app, does it take you to your store on that particular product? And why we really like this is our clients in Turkey, our, our retailers in Turkey, have been using this as a tool to acquire new customers. And the beauty of this, if you actually have deep linking with YouTube on Android, is you can target specific cohorts of customers. And the ones that, for instance, uh, we've been doing in Turkey is, you know, get me customers who are into e-commerce, who want to shop online, right? But who haven't visited my store in the past 30 days, for instance, right? Or I could, if I know who my most valuable customers is, you know, get me customers who are similar to these. And because I can do this kind of nuanced targeting, it's great bang for the buck. It's been very effective and it's really helped customers grow their active customer base. So this was the, the, the pure player side. Now for omni-channel players, the story was a bit different, right? So in terms of only, we had two big questions that we needed to answer. One being a little bit more short-term and the second one, which we're still working on is long-term. But the first question is, how do we ensure omni-channel players or brick and mortar retailers get make the most out of e-commerce, right? So how do you compete with pure players? How do you make sure that, you know, your e-commerce is tip top and up to speed? And the second question that you need to answer is, how do I make sure that my advertising on digital or my digital footprints really drives traffic to my store? And how do I see that customer in singularity? Right? So we know that this is a journey. And although discovery happens online, right? and in Turkey, that's around 80%. And I just saw the numbers, I think, from Debbie that in Africa, it's similar. How do I capture that person who searched something on online once they come to my store? How do I unify this? And this is an ongoing process, an ongoing journey. But this is the digital transformation that we've been working on with Omni players. It's not easy to be frank, right? Because we see a lot of silos, we see different KPIs. So for us, this is more of an organizational transformation journey that we've been on uh, with some of them for now two or three years in everything from, you know, how do you set up your KPIs? What should your org structure be? What does it mean to have a separate e-commerce department? Should it be under sales? Should it be under marketing, et cetera? So these are some of the tough questions which don't necessarily have single right answers, but you need to find the answer that resonates most with uh, within your organization. The second area where we've really supported them was in how do I grow my business, right? So if I'm a, high-end fashion player, right, which other categories should I be in? Right? Or should I not be in any? But how do I make sure that I, I don't actually lose on that demand? Now, if I'm a specialized kind of footwear company, should I become a marketplace, right? Should I have other merchants selling under my umbrella? Yes or no? And this is, again, a transformation. But the one that's really helped them now, especially with kind of COVID unwinding and the head or the, the tailwinds of COVID kind of subsiding was exports, right? So we strongly believe that Turkey can become its good export hub, especially with apparel and home and garden. And we've been working over the past now 24 months with our retailers to help them grow abroad, right? So, and this is basically ans answering questions like, you know, which countries should I expand in? If I expand, do I just do this with e-commerce or do I need to set up my store? How do I solve for delivery? What's the payment scheme going to look like, right? Is it only going to be credit cards or do I have to get cash at the door? What does logistics, logistics look like? How do I take returns, et cetera? So going into exports is not only about advertising in foreign markets, but it's about building that infrastructure. And I'm super happy that at least our larger clients in Turkey who, who we've been helping to export in other markets are seeing massive improvements in their business. And it's also driving in hard currency for them, which they can reinvest uh, into themselves. But this is all about channel diversification. So whether it's about going new categories or new countries. I did talk about apps, but I also just wanted to outline why apps are so important. 
we know that apps are sticky, right? And if you get that app downloaded on somebody's phone, and if you can get them to interact, whether it be through you know search advertising, app install campaigns, or even just push notifications, the impact is huge. So we've been helping our clients, both in terms of downloads, and you can see that they've actually scored massive wins, but more importantly is how do we make sure that that app is used once it's downloaded, right? What kind of offers do you need to have? What kind of ad campaigns do you need to have? And how do we make sure that it's, it's sticky? The other areas around categories. So what we found out very quickly is with the lockdowns and then coming out of the lockdowns and what, as people's lives change, different categories are kind of experiencing this very differently. Like, so consumer electronics in 2020 boomed and nobody was expecting it, but then because of that boom and given the life cycle of the products, last year we did see a decline. Uh, Home and garden was uh, similar. Apparel was more or less constant. So what insights do you need from Google right, to make sure that you're ready for this planning? How are you not kind of you know caught off guard when you understand that, econ that electronics is going to shrink, but for instance, apparel is going to grow. So how do we make sure that you have access to all of these insights before it actually happens? So it's all about foresight. It's about making sure that you know, you're well equipped to weather this uh, storm, so to say. And last but not least, it's about how do you diversify your ad spend? So this is basically a picture of how things have changed in Turkey. As you can see, yes, search is still very large because it's, we know that's where intent is, but based on the needs, you need to be willing to use a good product mix of different products. And that is gonna be different for pure players and on channel players, right? So if the channel player, if it's all about branding, we would expect you to spend more on awareness and concentration, for instance. Whereas if you're a retailer who's very focused on the lower part of the funnel, which is all about transactions and stuff about action, but you can see that this is dynamic, but irrespective of that, it's a making sure that you have a good portfolio, a good advertising mix of different products. And finally, automation. So we're very proud of what we've been able to accomplish with, with automation, especially with Pmax, which is just been launched and we are now globally number one. But again, for me, the most do this justice because it's not about being number one or it's not about having, you know, auto bidding at 90%. It's about the benefit that this creates for our retailers. And that is all about efficiency. So. Whenever I talk to my CEO or CMO colleagues, the only thing that I tell them is this, look, if you only had one person in your advertising department, right, would you want them to be chasing after profits and growth? Or would you want them to be optimizing campaigns? You do the choice, you, you, you pick, right? And more often than not, they say, yes, of course, I want profit and I want growth and, you know, I can actually can outsource automation. And then my answer is, is one, if you're okay with that, then be willing to outsource automation uh, to Google because this really works. Automated campaigns do wonders, but also for you guys, don't take my word on it, test, and I'm sure you're gonna see similar results because this is kind of tested across various retailers. So to recap, our, our lessons were threefold. You need to go into new channels, what that channel is, whether it's new markets, whether it's new applications, you, you need to be sure that you need to grow. It's all about testing and learning, right? We need to try. The world is changing, it's ever evolving. Nobody has the single right answer. There may not actually be a single right answer, so it's about making sure that you can test and using the most out of automation so that you can free up your resources and deploy them to where they're actually going to give you better returns. I'll just skip this and move on to my last slide. So then the last question that I have is, what's next? Right? So if this was 2021 and 2022, what do we anticipate happening in the future? 
we're seeing two major trends which are on the left side. So from a client, from a retailer perspective, all our discussions are now around efficiency. And right? so, yes, we've invested. Now we want the profits. We know that demand may be slowing down, but how do I get the most out of it? So efficiency is top of mind for our retailers. But for consumers, it's about, I love e-commerce, I've tried it out, it's become a habit, but do I really need to work with 10 different retailers? Right? Or do I need to have five, 15 different applications for my e-commerce needs? What kind of consolidation is gonna happen? And the answer for, to this is again gonna vary if you're a pure player or an omni-channel player, but for efficiency, right, it's about, for pure players, it's around being a super app, right? So, and the reason why this resonates is if you're a super app that can actually fulfill the needs of consumers on, on different things, it helps you solve for the consumer problem of, you know, do I need 15 apps? So maybe you just become that one app that everybody flocks to. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, because you can get more traffic in, you don't lose that traffic, right? So you don't care whether somebody wants to rent a car, they want to buy a t-shirt, or they just want to watch, watch a movie, you get all of that traffic in and you try to make the most of that traffic. So it's creating big wins in terms of efficiency. If you're a omni-channel player, right? Then efficiency becomes more about, I have stores, I have a massive cost space, but then I also have this thing called digital and e-commerce. So which I know is actually more efficient, how do I make the most of that to, tra to drive traffic to my stores, right? This is about, you know, do I buy online and pick up in store? You know, if somebody actually creates a shopping cart online, how do I make that instantly available to them, to them the minute they walk into the store? But how, so hence, it's about how do I use the power of digital to make sure that I minimize my cost base? And from a consumer perspective, again, it's all about, yes, you might know me as a vertical player. I might be selling prep gift thing. I might be in the shoe business, but if I can expand into new categories, that's gonna be very relevant for consumers, then the consumer might not have to go to more places. And that's at least what we're now working on. The, these four quadrants are what we're working on with our retailers in Turkey. And it's what's kind of informing us for the next uh, two years. So with that, uh, I want to thank you all for listening. I hope this does provide some glimpse into what we're doing in Turkey and act as a source of inspiration for all of you. So thank you. Enjoy your sessions and have a wonderful day.